In the next few lectures, we are going to talk about how cells divide to make new cells in the body. We're going to start by talking specifically about all the cells of the body except for eggs and sperm. And then we're going to talk about how those same cells are used as precursors to make eggs and sperm. So the cells of the body are called somatic cells. Soma means body. These are all cells of the body except eggs and sperm. Eggs and sperm are what we call the gametes. So all cells of the body except gametes. And then the gametes are going to have a different mode of division. The gametes are the eggs and sperm. We're going to look at what's called the cell cycle, which is the life of a cell from the time it divides till the time that new cell divides again. There are going to be a lot of definitions, a lot of terms that are new in this lecture. Okay, let's start looking at the cell cycle. But before we do that, I want to talk about when would a cell need to divide? Well, you started off as one cell. You came from an egg with 23 chromosomes and a sperm with 23 chromosomes that came together to form that very first cell with 46 chromosomes that made you. That first cell is called a zygote. And that first cell of 46 chromosomes divided to make every cell in your entire body. So when do cells divide? example of when cells divide is going to be development. And that's what I just described, that very first cell dividing to produce a whole organism. That's development. Then you weren't born the same size you are now. You had to grow. So growth would be another time that cells need to divide. Cells have a lifespan, so cell replacement would be another time that cells need to divide. Cells get damaged and need to be repaired. So repair would be another time that cells need to divide. Unfortunately, some cells, once you reach adult size, can never divide again. The, the cells of your brain and your spinal column, your spinal cord, cannot divide again. They cannot repair themselves. Muscle cells can. Muscle cells are an example of cells that once you reach adult size, only divide if you damage them. So if you're lifting weights, you're damaging those cells and you're prompting them to divide again. And then finally, I'll put this in a different color because this is going to be a different type of cell division, to make gametes. We're going to divide cells to make our eggs and sperm. And that's going to be kind of a different type of, of cell division. Division of the somatic cells is called mitosis. So division is called mitosis. Division of cells to make eggs and sperm is going to be called meiosis. We're going to start by talking about mitosis, and then we're going to talk about meiosis, two different processes. I want to show you a picture of the 46 chromosomes in a human cell. This picture is called a karyotype. A karyotype is really just an array of your chromosomes. It's a, it's a picture of the chromosomes from one individual. So you have 23 pairs of chromosomes, or 46 total. So you have two number ones, two number twos, two number threes, and so on. For each of these pairs, you got one from the egg that made you and one from the sperm that made you. So when I say the egg has 23 and the sperm has 23, each of these gametes has one of each. So now when those combine, you have two of each. 
So you have 46 chromosomes total. And that's really 23 pairs. You have two number ones, two number twos, two number threes, and so on. And here's a picture of that. The first 22, numbers 1 through 22, are called the autosomes. And then number 23, those are called the sex chromosomes. You're either XX, XY, or some variation of that. We can have other variations on number 23 and, and still have a, a living organism. This individual is a male. We know that because pair 23 is an X and a Y. But the first 22, those pairs very closely resemble each other. And again, you've got one from mom and one from dad. Adult humans obviously have gone through all these stages, all these reasons why a cell would divide. They've made gametes, they've repaired things, replaced cells, they've developed and they've grown. All those things. A couple of other terms that are important, diploid and haploid. The diploid number of chromosomes is what we call the 2N number. Haploid, I always think of this as meaning half, haploid is the N number of chromosomes. So in humans, the diploid number of chromosomes would be 46. And all the body cells are diploid. All the somatic cells of the body are all diploid. So we would say these somatic cells are all 2N. They're all diploid. Our gametes, on the other hand, as you saw here, have half that number. And that's called the N number of chromosomes. And in humans, that's half of that. It's 23. So our gametes have the N number of chromosomes. That's so when they come together, they will make the 2N. So this is the N number, this is the N number, and they're going to make a diploid cell, 2N. That is important to realize because when we go through meiosis, we're going to be doing a reduction division to get from 46 back down to 23. Those gametes are going to come from a cell of 46 because remember, every cell of your body came from this original cell of 46. So mitosis and meiosis, diploid, haploid. So we're going to start looking then at the cell cycle. The cell cycle is a clock of sorts. It's everything a cell goes through from the time it divided. So this would be a cell that goes through division. Now we have two new little baby cells. They're going to start growing. They're going to replicate their DNA, get ready to divide, and divide again. And that's the clock. This first phase is called interphase, and it includes G1, S, and G2. G stands for gap. This is gap phase one, S, gap phase two, and then this is the M phase. You can see that the M phase, in this case mitosis, has a lot of subphases. Prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then cytokinesis, the cytoplasm of the cell dividing. We're going to talk about what happens in all of these stages, and we're going to talk about what happens here. Less detail here, more detail in mitosis. So let's start with what we call interphase of the cell cycle. Interphase. 
It includes first G1. G1, also called gap phase one, this is the primary growth phase of the cell. So if this cell just divided from another cell, that cell divided and made two new diploid cells. So these cells need to grow. So G1 is a period of cell growth. And this is also really a time of protein translation and the cell doing its cell job. Whatever its job is, that's what it's going to be doing. So doing its cell job. Again, if it's if its job is producing insulin, it's going to be producing insulin. If its job is producing testosterone, it's going to be producing testosterone during this G1 phase. This is the longest phase of a cell cycle. You can see that yellow band is the longest. Then, toward the end of G1, we're going to go through a very important checkpoint, and we'll talk about the, the details of that later, but this G1 slash S checkpoint is very, very critical. It's going to make sure everything is good before we replicate the DNA, because here's what happened. This is where it gets a little more confusing. I showed you that karyotype, and in that karyotype, every chromosome looks like this. We can say it has almost two legs. We have 46 of these. in humans. If this was chromosome number one, we would say this whole thing is a chromosome, and each of these is called a chromatid. That's a chromatid, and that's a chromatid. So at this stage in the cell cycle, we would say chromosome number one has two chromatids. They are identical. Where did we produce the second one? We produced that during the S phase of the cell cycle. This is a period of DNA replication. What happens is you start off with one strand of DNA, but since we eventually want to divide that DNA into two separate cells, we need to replicate it. And when we replicate it, we attach it to the original one. It's a good way to keep everything organized so that when we go to divide the cell, everything will get pulled apart and we make sure that we get one of each in the new cell. So at some stages in the cell cycle, chromosome number one would look like this. Okay, so this would also be chromosome number one. The difference is in this first example, right here, we would say chromosome number one only has one chromatid. It hasn't replicated yet. It's just one strand of DNA. This is what it would look like in G1 of the cell cycle. So in G1, those chromatids were just pulled apart into two different cells. So in G1, all 46 chromosomes look like this. In the S phase, we're going to replicate that. We're going to make an exact copy and we're going to attach it. So this is what happens in the S phase. So going back to here, this checkpoint, what we want to do is before we replicate this DNA, we want to check it for mutations. We want to make sure all the bases are correct before we make another copy of it and then pull it into two cells. Because right now, 
you just have one cell with that DNA. But when this divides, you're going to now have two more cells with that DNA. And each generation, you're just going to keep generating more and more cells with bad DNA. So we want to check for DNA mutations before we move on. So this G1S checkpoint, check for DNA mutations prior to the S phase, prior to DNA replication. If it's determined that there are mutations, that there are problems, then the cell cycle gets halted. This clock stops, and either that DNA gets repaired, or if it can't be repaired, the cell is signaled to destroy itself. All the lysosomes open up, and the cell is digested, or in some cases, if this is a cancer cell or something that the immune system detects as being defective, the immune system will destroy the cell. So that checkpoint between G1 and S is very important. But if everything is a go, we're going to go through the S phase. And the S phase, the second part of interphase, is where we do this replication. So S phase is a time where DNA is replicated. We go from just one chromatid to having now two chromatids, so that eventually that cell can divide. These are exact copies of each other. And since they're attached to each other in their exact copies, they're called sister chromatids. So sister chromatids are attached. They are exact copies of each other. We made that copy during the S phase. That's the purpose of the S phase, is to make that sister chromatid. They are genetically identical, and they remain attached. They are attached to each other by this protein complex called cohesins, or sometimes called cohesin proteins. Sticky proteins holding those two together. We want them to stay together until a time in the cell cycle where it's determined that everything is connected correctly so we can pull them apart. Okay, sister chromatids are generated during the S phase. Then we go to the G2 phase. So replication of DNA, G2. We're going to start getting ready for the cell to divide in G2. So the organelles are going to replicate, and we're going to start organizing these important components called microtubules. Microtubules are what are eventually going to pull these sister chromatids apart so we can form two new cells. And we're going to start doing that in G2. I want to show you a picture to talk in more detail about how this is all going to happen. Okay, so this would be a chromosome number one from one parent, and this would be a chromosome number one from another parent. Okay, and this would be in G1. Each one just consists of one chromatid. We go through DNA replication in the S phase, and now each one has a sister chromatid. Okay, so Let's pretend again this is chromosome number one. You have two chromosome number ones, one from mom and one from dad. Moms replicate, and they're connected so they're sister chromatids. Dads replicate, and they're connected so they're sister chromatids. Even though these are both chromosome number one, this blue one and this red one are not sister chromatids. Okay, this was mom's DNA, and this was dad's DNA. And even though they code for the same trait in the same location, they are not identical. Mom and dad do not have identical DNA. But this pair together, that pair, those are called homologous chromosomes. And that's an important term as well. I 
told you there's a lot of vocabulary in this lecture. A lot of vocabulary. I love this, this term homologous though. It means speaking the same language. Same language. Homologous chromosomes. They're speaking the same language because they code for the same traits in the same location. If this chromosome had a gene right here for one particular enzyme, then this one would have a gene for that particular enzyme in the exact same location. But they would code for them differently, with a different base sequence, because one's from mom and one's from dad. So these are both chromosome number one. They're called homologous. Homologous chromosomes. They have the same number, but more importantly, they code for the same traits in the same locations. A couple of other important terms to go along with this. It's a lot of vocabulary. Coding for the trait, that happens on what's called a gene. A gene is a region of DNA that codes for one trait or one protein. That's called a gene. The location of that gene is called the locus. So another way of saying this is we would say that homologous chromosomes have genes in the exact same loci. Locus would be similar and loci would be plural. That's why they're called homologous. They're speaking the same language. We're going to have some other terms that are important to know too. So cohesin proteins attach the sister chromatids until we're ready to pull them apart. There are some ring structures on each sister chromatid called kinetochores. So let's go back to our picture. Ring structure on each sister chromatid called a kinetochore. C-H-O-R-E, but it's not pronounced chore. It's pronounced core. Okay, and then this region of each chromosome that's pinched in, which is where, it's the region where the kinetochore exists and it's also where the cohesin proteins attach, that region is called the centromere. So this whole region here, this region is called the centromere. And that's where this is all happening, is at the centromere region of each chromosome. Those terms are all going to be important as we go through this, the story of cell division. As we go through the story of cell division, there will be, there will be fewer definitions. Okay, this is showing really the role of that kinetochore. What's going to happen is microtubules are going to attach to each kinetochore to eventually pull those chromatids into two separate cells. Okay, so the centromere, that's the point of constriction. The kinetochore, that's where the microtubules are going to connect. Each sister chromatid has a centromere region. Okay, and those chromatids stay attached by the cohesin proteins. So a lot of vocabulary. I know I keep saying that, but it's true. <laughs> okay, this is what happens during G2. So G1, they look like this. G2, we replicate. I'm sorry. G1, they look like this. S, we replicate. G2, we're getting ready for the cell to divide. So major events during G2. In G2, organelles are replicating because we're getting ready to split them into two separate cells. So organelles replicate, especially the major organelles that that cell needs to do its cell job. The other thing that happens is this structure called the centriole is going to replicate. We had just one and now we need two because they're going to need to move to opposite poles of the cell. 
The centriole is where those microtubules are going to assemble. So centrioles replicate. So centriole replicate. We go from one to two. This is where the microtubules are going to assemble. So microtubules, microtubules assemble here. So DNA repl has replicated already in the S phase. Centrioles replicate and the cell prepares for division. There's going to be another important checkpoint at the end of G2, G2 checkpoint. And that G2 checkpoint is really asking the question, is the cell ready to divide? And in particular, did this happen? Did the centriole replicate? So G2 checkpoint. Remember, G1 was asking, are there any DNA mutations before the cell is allowed to replicate its DNA? Now, G2 checkpoint is, is the cell ready to divide? In particular, did the centriole replicate? If everything checks out, then we're going to enter the M phase, and we're going to start mitosis. So we need to talk about all the details of mitosis for each phase, prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then cytokinesis to produce two new cells from that original one.